Hey, morning. Pete, North Las Vegas. We're on the home stretch of these uh, two carbine builds. Uh, one of them is a 16-inch barrel and the other one's an 18. Um, I've already done an install video one and an install video two on assembling these things using the uh, Aero Precision Atlas S1 handguard and the Criterion barrels. And today's video should be a short one. I'm hoping I keep it short. Um, but we're going to put the uh, muzzle device on. This is a uh, VG6 Epsilon. And this particular muzzle device does three different functions. It acts as a compensator. That's the slots on the top. And uh, those help prevent your barrel from jumping up. And then these slots on the side are your brake. And that helps minimize recoil. And then uh, these slotted tips on the end help reduce uh, muzzle flash. Now, my experience using these are they are very good compensators and very good brakes for a uh, 5.56. I don't know how they work or how well they work on other calibers, but for 5.56, these really do a good job on compensation and braking. Um, not so much on flash suppression. They do reduce the signature, but uh, nowhere near as much as a, like a standard birdcage. But I mean, they do they do knock the flash down. But for a device that does all three functions, uh, I think these are kind of hard to beat. Okay, so I'm using copper NICs, and I I prefer copper over the aluminum. I, I, it probably doesn't really matter, but this has a 1,800 degree uh, temperature rating, where the aluminum anti-seize has a, a much lower temperature rating. I mean, does it really matter? Uh, probably not, but why not use the higher temperature rating? So anyway, um, I got some copper anisees on the barrel. Um, this is a crush washer, and it has a convex side and a concave side. And um, that's the concave side, convex side. So the concave side goes towards the barrel. The convex side is goes towards the uh, the muzzle device. Um, VG6 on I think I think on all of their uh, muzzle devices um, they give you this hole that's already pre-drilled. So if you have a barrel that's below 16 inches and you need to pin and weld it because of the uh, mental midgets at the ATF, yeah, I said it. Um, then this is already pre-drilled and ready to go if you need to pin and weld this onto your barrel. So um, another thing, um, I've seen a couple of videos where these were mounted upside down. <laughs> and these slots here are for your compensation. So that's, that's going to be the top. And uh, so the logo is going to be on the bottom. So that's basically how it's going to look from the front only a lot straighter so that's that's the correct orientation <clears throat> okay so another thing um, VG6 makes these and what they call their slimline version so they've reduced the outside diameter of this to match the barrel and so if you, if you do happen to have a, a pin and welded uh, Epsilon or Gamma or whatever it is that VG6 sells and you buy the slimline version that allows you to slide your gas block off um, Without having to take this off so long as that crush washer doesn't get Smashed out so far and prevents your gas block from coming off that could still possibly be an issue But they reduce the diameter of this so that it is possible to get your gas block off without taking this off Okay, so in yesterday's uh, video, I was talking about the Midwest action rod or reaction rod, whatever you want to call it. And uh, this, this slides into your, your uh, upper receiver action, and this locates in the uh, barrel extension and immobilizes everything. So when you tighten and loosen stuff, you don't damage your receiver. Um, what I forgot to mention was, uh, in addition to this being an advantage over some of the competitors' designs, uh, Midwest Industries allows you to remove it if for some reason you don't want it on your, your rod. And then they also give you a, an, Allen, an Allen wrench. So if for some reason you don't want this on, on your, your rod, you don't have to have it there. 
So that's two advantages. Okay, so we're out here in the dungeon again. I'm gonna get my rod in the vise. Before I put it in the vise, I'm gonna wrap some blue tape around the end of it. And uh, no reason to make that ugly if you don't have to. Okay. Okay, we're locked up in there, so we're ready to tighten this. Um, on the VG6 Epsilon, it's a uh, three-quarter inch. So um, I'm going to kind of sneak up on this and uh, get it timed. And I'm going to try really hard not to go past where I need to go because I know I'm being Captain Obvious here, but once you crush a crush washer, it you can't really uncrush it. So um, you can back it off a slight amount if you go too far, just a very small amount. But if you need to back it off too much, you've already smashed the, the crush washer and you're going to have to get a new one. Start all over. All right, so let's get this thing snugged up and timed and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm not trying to get this all at one, one motion. I tighten it and then I back it off a little bit and I tighten it again. Um, it's kind of like eating an elephant. You can do it, but you got to do it one bite at a time. So I'll do the rest of it off camera, and when I get this thing where I think it's perfectly timed and straight up and down and looking really good, we'll we'll take another look at it. Okay, so between the gas block and the handguard, I tried to try to get that slot lined up and split hairs between the two so that it looks about as straight as it can be. At least I think I got it as straight. I mean, you're just talking like a freaking half a degree off, maybe. So, I'm happy with that. My OCD has been satisfied. Okay, so um, VG6 also sells this device here. It's called the Cage Concussion Altering Gas Expansion Device. And um, that's this thing here. And... Um, this fits over your um, this fits over your your muzzle device here your your BG6 and I believe this also works on the Gamma and some of the other models that they have but there's a little keyway here and you can see the little notch on the bottom that fits up here at the front like so then you slide your uh, your cage on. And you need to loosen that a little bit more. Maybe it's this one that's hanging up. Yeah, it was that one. Okay. So kind of snug these down just a little bit. Okay. Then you're going to rotate the, uh, the device. As soon as I unsnug it now. Okay. Just roughing it in. Um, okay, so if you've ever been standing next to somebody shooting a rifle with a brake, it's uh, it's pretty brutal. I don't have this on straight, and um, I'm probably not going to keep this on a rifle. Just if I decide to go to a range and there's a bunch of other people around, um, it also has a couple of threaded holes here, but they didn't provide any uh, set screws for the side holes. And, and the instructions, all they're talking about is these, these two top set screws. So I imagine as an option, you could probably go get your own set screws and just put a couple extra in there if you wanted to. And you can see here that they put a slot for where your pin, your welded pin goes. In case your weld is sticking up a little bit, this, this slot will get around the, the weld. Like I said, I don't have it on perfectly straight, but um, as far as how this affects the function of the muzzle device, I don't really know. I think compensation wise it's probably okay because most of these slots are still open. Um, it may affect the braking action a little bit and it won't affect uh, the flash at all. But anyway, this is used just to knock down on the concussion and, and the noise from the brake if there's other people around. Okay, so the 16 inch is done. 
And thought I'd just go over the build real quick in case you missed the first two uh, installation videos. Um, aero precision buffer assembly, aero precision upper, Palmetto State Armory lower with the uh, Frankenstein logo. Um, all the pins are CMMG. I put a velocity single stage four pound trigger in it. Um, the trigger comes with tensioning screws, set screws on the bottom. So you don't have to put anti-walk, anti-rotation pins in, but I put these in from KS Precision just for some, uh, some added insurance. Um, Aero Precision Atlas One Handguard, uh, Criterion Hybrid Barrel. It's a uh, one and eight twist wild chambering chrome line hand lapped. I went with a VG6 uh, muzzle device. I put the Magpul uh, All Steel Pros uh, running a, uh, a Raptor charging handle. And most likely this uh, aim point is going to stay on here. And uh, Aero Precision Bolt Carrier Group. And uh, probably just going to run a standard two point sling. I'm not into all the, the real fancy stuff on the slings. Some of those slings nowadays, you just almost need a two year college degree to operate them. So just a standard two point sling is, is good enough for me with a, a quick release. Uh, quick release buckle okay so this one's done and um, probably next week I'm going to try to get both of these rifles out and uh, give them a test run get them sighted in so I'll get this one finished up and we'll do a quick video clip on that and then uh, this install video uh, number three is, is done okay so on a 16 inch I went with the uh, American flag on the bastion trigger guard and then on the 18 inch I went with the Greek uh, come and take it okay so the 18 inch is 100% uh, complete now I switched over the uh, Midwest Industries and like I was saying in the uh, earlier clip this lever was not able to latch because of the 45 degree offset. So by putting the American Defense on here, I now have all the clearance I needed. And it's, everything just kind of fits. Just enough clearance. And, uh, <clears throat> all right, that's it.